All right, and last, I'm going to take a look at a problem like number 26 in chapter 13. So here we have a 2 by 2 factorial design. In your book, it's um, the type of video game, violent or nonviolent, and gender, female or male. That's the gender of the player. Uh, here, I've made up some fake data and just made a 2 by 2 design where two levels of A and two levels of B. Just like the example, I have six people per condition and a total of 24 people in the study. So this is how the data is given to you in your table form in the book. Now, I really strongly suggest that you begin using JASP to deal with factorial ANOVA. Yes, you can do it inside of, an, inside of Excel. In fact, this is the exact type of structure you would want for your data if you were going to use Excel. But Excel is not going to get you all the metrics. So for example, Excel will not calculate ADA squared for you. It's that curly N. It's called ADA. Um, it's not going to get ADA squared for you. You'd have to get it. Now, ADA squared is pretty easy to get. It is the sum of square of the effect divided by the sum of square total. Um, but you can get it if you just use JASP. It will calculate it for you. So you could do it in Excel and then calculate those effects or you can simply use JASP, which will get you a lot more insight. Now remember, if we're going to do JASP, we have to organize our data correctly. So how do we organize our data? We always need a column for each variable. So what variables do we have? We have a variable A, a variable B, and a variable outcome, which, you know, whatever you want to call it. So I have two levels of A. So everything in A is going to be a 1 or a 2. I have 12 A1s, 12 A2s, right? So I'm going to make 12 1s and 12 2s. Remember, I should have a total of 24 people. And here, because I have a label, that should go to row 25, okay? And then inside of that, I have 6 B1 that are A1 and 6 B2s that are... So here, I'm going to make 6... ones under B and six twos under B, right? Because I have a balanced design here. Did I get my right number? Six ones, this one. So I have six ones, six twos. Make sure I got all my right numbers and that's 12, all right. Yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna want this same breakdown six ones and six twos inside of the A twos, because under A two, I have six that were B one and six that were B two. Now I need to make sure I align all the scores correctly. So for the people who were A one, B one, this group of data, I need them to go with A one, B one. Now for A one, B two, A one, B two, this data goes here. Now, a2, B1, I'm going to get those six scores, A2, B1, and then finally, A2, B2. And so this is how you'd want the data organized to do an analysis in JASP. So I can take this data, and we can do our whole save as, and remember, it prefers to have a CSV file. So I'm gonna get a CSV file, save that on my desktop. We're gonna open JASP. I'm gonna to go to my desktop, open the example we just saved, and there it is. So now I can run my ANOVA, where my dependent variable is my outcome, and I have two fixed factors, A and B. And automatically, this does the effect of A, the effect of B, and the interaction as part of the statement. Notice I can get effect sizes and get A to squared just like that for the effect of A, the effect of B, and the interaction. All three of those calculated for me just like that. So I now have evaluated, and like in this case, none of these p-values are 0 0.05 or less, so there are no effects. That's not surprising because I made up random data. So in random data, you don't often expect to see an effect. That's the whole idea. Um, and then for the effect size, it's calculated the effect size for both main effects and the interaction for me. So once I've organized my data correctly, JASP can really make analysis uh, pretty streamlined for us on problems like this. So hopefully that helps.